have Tony Hoffman here to speak to us. Tony is the Public Works Director for the City of Oakland Park, Kansas, and has served in his position since October 2014. Tony enlisted in the U.S. Army in 1984 and then earned an appointment to the United States Military Academy at West Point, graduating in 1990. His military career spanned 26 years, attaining the rank of Colonel before retiring in 2013. His military awards include the Legion of Merit, two Bronze Stars Combat Awards, Army Commendation Medal with V device for Valorous Combat Duty, as well as the Combat Action Badge. He is a graduate of the prestigious U.S. Army Ranger School as well as Army Airborne School and has served a variety of combat deployments during his military career, including a 14-month tour in Iraq. Tony has a Bachelor's of Science from the United States Military Academy at West Point, a Master's from Colorado State University, and a master's from the Eisenhower School for National Security and Resource Strategy in Washington, D.C. An advocate for military veterans, he is the board of chairman for Warriors of Sin, a nonprofit that assists veterans and first responders suffering from post traumatic stress. He is also a, fo a fellow in the Society of American Military Engineers. Tony is an avid long distance runner and has completed the storied Boston Marathon 11 times, as well as the legendary Leadville 100 mile trail run. His purpose is simple. Inspire others to self-improvement through action and word. He and his wife, Susan, have three children. Nate, a sophomore at Northwestern University, Abby, a sophomore at Blue Valley, West, at Blue Valley Northwest, and Kate, a sixth grader at Harmony Middle School. Now, here's Mr. Hoffman to speak to you all. Excel now and in the future. That's the Blue Valley West Jaguar mission statement. Four cornerstones associated with that mission statement. Family, pride, excellence, and grit. We're going to talk about those cornerstones today. We're going to come back to the mission statement. And I'd like to challenge Jaguars in a positive manner with two things as we leave here today, and we'll get to that. First and foremost, I want to thank you all for holding this Veterans Assembly. Very few schools do that, and I want to thank in particular the faculty and staff and the student body. So please give yourselves a round of applause. Is, is 
killed in action, unfortunately. They honor that family member. You see the boots, the Kevlar, the dog tags, etc. They honor that military member, whether it's an Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines, or Coast Guard. Oftentimes, our public doesn't see that. What you also don't see is, after that memorial service, that unit in combat will go back to do their mission. There is no break for them. They will serve that family member that has fallen. They will serve their own family members in a combat theater, and they will serve our great nation to continue their mission on a day-to-day -day basis without any break. And I wanted to make sure you understood that impact of what those combat units do in all services. Okay. Family, important cornerstone not only for Blue Valley West, but for the military as well. Next, I want to talk about pride and excellence. Um, Cheryl challenged me to, to talk, uh, hey, you may want to talk about your most memorable time in uniform. I really don't like talking too much about myself. Um, I would just say this, in 26 years, there's a lot of great memories, and it all came down to people and mission. I've lost touch with some folks along the line, but it always came down to people and mission. My most memorable time in uniform was right here in this area, and it wasn't on a combat deployment, although those were very emotional events and tough events. It was a domestic operations that occurred when I had the privilege to command the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers Kansas City District as a colonel, leading primarily civilians working shoulder to shoulder with technical experts. I want to roll this video for about three minutes to really show what pride and excellence is about for, for me personally, but also for the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, my former family, and still a family, um, as part of uh, displaying those cornerstones of pride and excellence. The U.S. Army Corps does whatever is needed, whenever it's needed, wherever it's needed. We handle some of the largest projects the nation has. Congress tapped us as the nation's engineer many years ago. We get to touch some very challenging but very rewarding projects, whether it's in the states or in contingency of environments around the world. We can take a project from initiation all the way through closeout and do the design, the construction management, and even do the operation and maintenance of that project. Kansas City District is focused on three major areas, civil works, military construction, and environmental and then, as required, to respond to emergency situations within our geographical area. It's on the ground. The bulk of our damage right now. We've got whole buildings missing, multiple subjects. The Payless building's completely down. Two people in home. One of them's my wife, and we can't get in there anyway. Jack, go to all stations. Fire one. On May 22, 2011, an F5 category tornado obliterated a six-mile swath through the cities of Joplin and Duquesne, Missouri and the Army Corps of Engineers Kansas City District was called upon to execute one of the largest recovery missions ever experienced in the Midwest. Within one week, the district had a recovery field office up and running and an expedited debris removal operation underway. Within 90 days, 1.7 million cubic yards of debris had been removed enough to fill an entire football field as high as the Eiffel Tower. The Corps completed the infrastructure for 346 temporary housing units ahead of schedule. The no excuses mentality pushed the district to meet all nearly impossible deadlines, including the mission to prepare eight temporary schools to begin on time in the fall. Our success to start on time is a major step in the healing process for our community. Army Corps is my hero, and now I know how crucial the role that you play in helping us get back to our new normal. As the Kansas City District mobilized for the Joplin disaster, they were notified of a major flood event on the Missouri River, and the district was faced with two epic events at the same time. We bring, frankly, a military mindset of mobilizing quickly, getting the right resources set, and then getting on the ground very quickly to assist those that have been affected by a particular disaster. Through geographical information system technology, the district created inundation maps to determine where flooding was most likely to occur, saving lives and preventing more damage than ever before. 
Communities were provided flood fighting equipment and supplies. We actually got sandbags out to levee districts before the flood event was here so that they could actually get structures up to help protect their facilities. When I think about the staff at the Kansas City District, what I think about is a team that will complete the mission for the customer. What they did to help the communities along the Missouri River as well as the community in Joplin to get through those disasters was remarkable in my view. Those two missions aged me about five years since I was a guy in charge of that, but uh, those are, are good examples of the military and what they can do in domestic operations, not just combat operations, and my hat's off to the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, but that was probably my most memorable time in uniform because I was in the hot seat, and, the, and talk about pride and excellence, that, that uh, Kansas City District came through for the nation in those two major disasters at the same time. So you notice I've changed the tire a little bit. I want to talk about that last corner still in grit. Okay, this is my Boston Marathon jacket. I, I only ran Boston Marathon once, which is it's the world's greatest race. It's the gold standard for marathon. I run 11 times. I'll run 12 times in 2019. I'm qualified to go. I'm wearing this because it's symbolic of grit. The last cornerstone I want to talk about. Probably my favorite of the four cornerstones. So what is grit? you've talked about it here, it's one of your cornerstones. Is it being resilient, not quitting, sticking through when things get tough? Yeah, it, it's all of that. If you looked it up in Webster's or on Google, you'd probably find a hundred different definitions of grit. Here's what I think grit is. I think it's challenging yourself to do something that you love to do that's uncomfortable. Putting forth the effort necessary to see it through but not knowing what that end result is going to be. Okay, that's great. It's getting comfortable being uncomfortable. Okay. Show the last photo, one of the second last photos here, we'll get to that in a second. We have 1,600 young adults here at Blue Valley West. Every one of you has a unique talent. You may not even know what that talent is. You've got it. Your parents, your grandparents, your coaches try to pull that out of you. You'll, you'll get there if you don't know what that talent. It may be athletics. It may be engineering. It may be STEM related. It may be artistic. Every one of you has a talent. In her book called Grit, Angela Duckworth has two equations that kind of give the def def another definition of grit. Those equations are this. Talent times effort equals skill. Skill times effort equals achievement. Duckworth's main point is effort counts twice. What I would tell each of you, or I'd recommend to each of you, if you can develop the behavior of effort, you will meet the mission statement to excel now in the future of Blue Valley Woods. Effort. It's about effort. It's not always going to go your way when you set up to do something. You got to stick with it. That photo back there, um, I've run a lot of marathons, that, that's fine. Boston Marathon Special Race, that, that's fine. For me personally, I want to challenge myself to do something different, something uncomfortable. So I chose to run 100 miles. Okay, Just, hey, it's only adding, what, 73.8 miles to 26.2, okay? And I chose to do it, um, in Leadville, Colorado, the highest incorporated city in the U.S., which sits at 10,152 feet. Oh, by the way, it goes up to 12,600 feet to Hope Pass. And oh, by the way, you get 30 hours to complete that race. It starts at 4 a.m. on Saturday. If you can survive it, it ends at 10 a.m. on Sunday. And oh, by the way, there's intermediate cutoffs along the way. If you don't meet a certain time, you're out. You don't know what that end result's going to be. Last I looked, we're about 900 feet here in uh, Overland Park, Kansas. Not really acclimatized for that race. I wouldn't recommend running 100 miles, though. Okay. Here's my point. Tried it in 2013, did, was educated on it, thought I was mentally and physically prepared, went out, didn't meet the time cut, got to 60 miles, got pulled off the course. 60 miles. Hey, good effort. 
not used to not achieving something, right? Again, the unknown. You don't know. Grit's about not knowing. It's pushing your limits. Kicked my rear end, broke me down mentally. When got back on the horse in 2014, looked at all the lessons learned, did some good things out there, applied those lessons learned in 2014, you get the end result. 29 hours, 31 minutes. That's a picture of Ken Clover, the founder of the Leadville 100, finishing that race. It's not about me. My point is each one of you has to find that effort. The other special sauce between 2013 and 2014 that I applied was something I call RFP, Relentless Forward Product. You combine effort with a relentless forward progress, I guarantee you each of you will excel now and in the future of Blue Elements. That, folks, is grit. When you're at 12,000 feet, don't want to go any farther, and you're putting one foot in front of the other, can barely breathe, that's grit. Point to all of you is, you can all do that. You can train yourself on grit by challenging yourself to do things that are uncomfortable, regardless of the reason. I want to leave with two challenges. As we talked about the cornerstones of family, pride, excellence, and grit. Two challenges, two positive challenges as we go forward. First, that mission statement to prepare our students to excel now and in the future. That kind of sounds like it's more for faculty, right? Hey, they're here to prepare you. Here's my challenge to each of you, young adults here, Jaguars. Are you preparing yourself to excel now? You got a lot of help. You got great parents. You got great grandparents. You got siblings. You got coaches. You got other folks that are going to help you. But you do play a role in that to excel now in the future. You do play a role. So my challenge to you is, is to do that. You you play your own role. There's personal accountability. Second thing is, if I may put my veteran hat back on, is is simple. Please, as you go forward, support those folks in you. Why, why do I say that? You've got to recognize the veteran community, 0.5% of the U.S. population serves on active duty. 0.5%. It's a very small population. Okay. All veterans combined, and lined up here on the left and right, all veterans combined comprise about 7% of the U.S. population. That means 90, 93% of the population has never served. And that's okay. It's an all-volunteer force. You can show that last picture. But there's a challenge. There is a bridge between our population and the military. Help close that gap. Support the military. One thing I can guarantee is those in uniform, whether it's active duty, National Guard, or Reserve, they have your back, and they are defending your freedoms on a day-to-day -day basis. I would simply ask this. Have their back. You go on to do greater things, you may never serve in the military. That's okay. But have their back and recognize that, that we need to bridge that gap in society between our military. And the military plays a role in this too. We need to bridge that gap in society. They're a very isolated community. Embrace those in uniform and always support them whether you serve in uniform or not. That's my last really positive challenge for each of you. Last two items. If anybody ever wants to talk about um, serving in the military or has an interest, please let me know. Cheryl's got my contact information. I am not a recruiter, but I can give you the pros and cons because many of you would probably be good fits for the military. Some would not be good fits. But if you ever want to talk to somebody who's been there and made the decision to serve for 26 years, I'm more than happy to have the conversation in a positive manner for the pros and cons. And lastly, I just want to thank you again. Awesome, awesome, awesome for your school, for Blue Valley West Jaguars to do this and take the time out of your day. I want to wish you all the very, very best as you go forward at Blue Valley West and beyond in your careers. So thank you.